What's going on everyone, Honda Fit for Adventure here. And for the past five years, I've been traveling across the United States in the back of my 2015 Honda Fit. I did this with only three seats, a rock climbing pad for a mattress, and no platform. As you can see, it wasn't perfect, mainly due to the hump caused by the center console in the middle, but it got the job done. Last summer, I finally caved and removed my other rear seat, mainly to make room for a 12 volt cooler. Unfortunately, I lost some of the files of constructing my bed frame, so we'll just have to film this in reverse order, from function to frame. I may have lost a few inches in headroom, but I gained several more in length. Here's how I built my bed frame for my 2015 Honda Fit. Please enjoy. As you can see here, we're going to fold up my mattress into travel mode. I'm using a rock climbing bouldering pad and that folds up in the third that straps on my back to use when I go rock climbing. I have enough room between the seat and my bed frame to store two backpacks, one for each person, and this is also where I keep my shoes. Moving on behind the seats, we have my 12 volt cooler on the left. As you can see, I got some dry food in there because my last adventure was pretty cold and I put stuff in there to prevent it from freezing. On my right side, I have all my solar stuff. The lower portion holds my charge controller and solar batteries and the upper half holds the charging ports and a bunch of extra charging cables. I like to keep the 12 volt cooler behind the passenger seat. This way I can easily reach behind and grab something to eat or drink. Moving on to the back, we're going to remove both backpacks, fold up my mattress, and remove it from the car. The black and white checkered blanket is a 12 volt heated blanket. I usually tuck that into my sleeping bag at night. Moving on to the center storage area, I have two storage containers. One contains my dry food, while the other one contains my cooking utensils. Even though the bed frame is made out of five and a half inch lumber, I'm still able to use seven inch deep storage containers because in the middle of the car, it starts to taper down. As you can see here, I made the first storage section a little larger than the cooler. This way I have enough room to actually open the cooler door. It also provides enough room to store my 12 inch, 12 volt fan. As you can see, I tapered off the edges. This way the plywood doesn't rub against the interior panels when I lift it up and down. In the rear storage area, I keep my camping chair, window inserts, my road shower hose, and a full size spare tire. frame, I'm going to have to remove my solar mill crates and my 12 volt cooler first. I'm currently unplugging a 12 volt cooler, two USB cords that power my dash cam and a GPS unit, and another 12 volt plug for my neon lights. Here I'm removing the top half of my mill crate that has all the charging ports and cables. 
quickly disconnects using an Anderson cable. Here's another Anderson cable that disconnects the batteries and the charge controller from the solar panels. I'm currently using SLA batteries and I get a few comments about weight distribution on the car. I do have a road shower on the passenger side of the car, so the weight distribution is evenly centered between the passenger and driver's side. To remove the actual frame, we're going to remove eight screws. I have four on each leg. With the lumber being five and a half inches thick, I only needed two legs up toward the front. The back end just sits flush on top of the trunk area. You can see here I rounded all my pieces of wood. This will prevent any scratches in the plastic or tears in the fabric. The driver's side leg will have to be notched as the floorboard is shaped differently than the passenger side. Lifting up the frame to slide out the cooler. This would probably be a little easier if you had a helping hand, but as you can see it's easy enough to do with one person. This is an empty Rotopax gasoline tank. I don't keep anything in there. It's just to elevate the 12 volt cooler to make it even with the bed frame. I'll figure something out to raise it later. Here's the back of my car empty. You can see I have a few cords that I had plugged into my solar crate. One cord's for the 12 volt cooler. The gray cable plugs into the charge controller and displays the input and output of the solar panels and batteries up front. The red cables for my neon lights and the two USB cables for my dash cam and GPS unit. Since my mattress is so thick, I didn't need to use a lot of plywood to cover the frame to use as additional support. Just to show everyone how easy it is to take in and out of the car, I'm going to time myself how long it takes to install everything back into the vehicle. Everything went pretty smoothly. I did get caught up for an extra minute plugging in the gray cable from the charge controller to the display meter. So overall it took 11 minutes. Without that hang up, it would have taken 10 minutes exactly. So that's how I built my bed frame for my 2015 Honda Fit car camper. Thank you everyone for watching. I'll see everyone again real soon.